Hi everyone, it's Immortal Mage back to show a quick demo mostly for the beta users on how to use the new Launchpad integration with Prism. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I've got my Launchpad Mini here. It's connected to my iPad over USB. And the first thing I'm gonna do is put the Launchpad into programmer or developer mode. This tells it to ignore the current program and settings it has and instead just listen to the messages that are coming from Prism. So to do that, I'm pressing and holding session to enter this LED screen, and then I'm gonna press this orange button here. I already pressed it, so nothing's happening. But now if I press it, you'll see I'm in programmer mode. I can press session again to exit, and now I have blank uh, launch pad. So then from my iPad, what I'm going to do is add an instance of Prism. And we're gonna make it a little bigger. And then I'm going to connect Prism's output to the Launchpad Mini in, and the Launchpad Mini's output to Prism. And on Prism, what I wanna do is filter out and only send the six, SysX messages. If it sends out Mini messages, um, I haven't programmed anything to, you know, read or adjust to those, everything's over SysX, so the launch pad will react to them and you'll see like little lights blink up randomly. Um, it won't ruin anything, but it might get in the way of your flow. Okay, so now we're back to Prism, we've got everything connected. The last step is to go to device settings, press launch pad, and then select your type. I'm gonna do the launch pad mini. And you can see immediately the launch pad jumps up and starts to reflect the layout we have on Prism. So let me go over that really quickly. On the left, we've got our four navigation buttons. Those are the same. Um, on the right, we have our keypad. And to the left of that, the multi-mode buttons. Those function the same. Press them multiple times to cycle through. At the bottom, you have your sequence. Nothing special there. Add your steps, same way you normally would. You still have trig focus. If you press play while the host is playing, you'll see that react. Um, so yeah, it really does mirror what's going on with Prism. In a lot of ways, it's kind of like how Push marries, you know, Push marries Ableton beautifully, and uh, by divine luck, this mir mirrors Prism beautifully. Um, so yeah, so we've got that, and now these page graphics, basically how do we go right, left, and set up our sequence, are over here to the right. These right let us go right and left a page. And this is our sequence setup menu. So I can go here and I'm gonna select eight bars at 1 16th step. And now I have eight pages and I can scroll between them. Uh, you also have this new multi-mode page selector strip. You can you know, press this to select pages. Um, it'll change every now and then to mirror other things. So if you go to the advanced art, for example, you don't have pages, but you do have you know, velocity sensitivity. And so you can add that using these. You know, let's turn it on so you can see it. Um, so yeah, you use this to select pages. You use this button right next to it is your track select button. So jumping in and out of track select. And then you have finally this volume strip is primarily what it's used for. It's also a multi-mode uh, to make things clear. I don't draw it all the time, especially on the home page, but if you touch it, you'll see the velocity change. And if you go in and trig focus, you'll see it up here for editing that. Um, you might be asking, what are these eight buttons? They're currently nothing. I might use these four for something later, and I want to keep these four, I think, for your own purposes. For example, I use this one to go and, in fact, let me open up the template that I've been using so I can show this off. But I like to use this one so that I can open Prism and close it. That way I can be playing with my synths, and if I ever need, you know, like the visual GUI to figure out what's going on or if I get lost, boom, I can open that. Or to select the parameters, you know, I don't really have a way to do that yet until I add knobs. Um, oh, and the final thing is these four buttons. So these generally react to try to reflect what's going on here. So right now you see a volume strip, so we can use that to select the volume. If we go to a tonal track, you'll see that we have octaves, and so we get the octave button, and you can see that light up so that we know what octave we're in. Um, if you go to your track select, or if you're in trig focus, sorry, you'll get this for setting octaves, but you'll also get these buttons for shifting right and left. Um, yeah, and that's what's different about those. Uh, and then final piece is at the top here, we have our transport controls. 
So we've got play, stop, you've got record and you can hold it to arm and get the other recording options. You have your save snapshot, you can load a snapshot, you can mute, copy, and paste. Um, and yeah, so if you understand how Prism works and the controls here, it's mirrored down. I didn't do a whole lot of special things other than make sure that I'm, you know, responding to the input controls and mapping it to the actual button that's pressed, not an internal thing. And that I'm also sending out the same color signals that I'm sending to, you know, the front facing iPad interface. Uh, so yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions. Hopefully this is easy enough and fun. I have only been able to test it on the Launchpad Mini. Setting up the Launchpad Pro and the Launchpad X was done using the manual descriptions. So if anybody does have one of those and can plug it in and test and confirm that it works as expected, that would be hugely helpful. But otherwise, I hope you have fun with this and create something awesome. Until next time.